amazing. I got a lot of things to show you that are amazing. So first time to the video, uh, showed you lots of, lots of stuff, but this video, I learned stuff, and I'm going to show you everything I learned. Uh, brand new code, super efficient, it fixes its own problems, love that. Um, so if you look, uh, this is the bunny filler, what version is this? This is version 14.0. All right. So if you can see, I got a bunch of little babies. They're filling up some plasma medium compressors. Super efficient. Don't have to do all those lines. That's always annoying. Um, I should have. This should be monos filling up with phase fabric. Oh no, there's no phase fabric in the thing. Oh yeah, let's put some phase fabric in there. Get him some phase fabric. All right, look. Oh my gosh, he's filling up the projector with phase fabric. Babies doing their jobs. That's what they got to do. And the cool thing, this is my favorite part, favorite parts of this baby. Let's take control of him and let's kill ourselves. So we're gonna go in the corner and, oh no. What happens in a second, how do I get rid of this? Control, brand new baby takes its place. These babies are smart. They got jobs and they do them. All right, uh, so I'm gonna go through the code um, this is for a beginner. I'm going to go through everything. Hope you learn some stuff, make your own code, and let's get to go. All right. So let's go to the very top. So this first part, um, customize variables. Um, this is like quality of life. Like you're in mid game and you no longer want a mono, you just change it. Let's say you want a, a flare, a, let's say a poly. Let's say that you want a poly, and let's put this over here, and let's get a poly going. So this code is totally copyable, which is the amazing thing. You just copy the code, and once you power it up, and once there is a poly, it'll start working. So if you want to change something on the fly, it works. Um, these little print things, they don't do anything. They're just kind of like notes for you, for me, whoever needs them. So uh, where we see the word who in the code, it's going to refer to this string, which is we want a poly. Um, set below unit capacity, polys have, I think they have 30. I'm pretty sure they have 30, let's double check. Polys are, yep, definitely 30. Um, you can't set this more than the unit is able to hold. If you do, he's just gonna set it the core forever, trying to get items he can't fill himself with. And then set below string desired material, easy. He's gonna fill a phase back. Let's see if he did his job yet. No, still loading. Actually, in sandbox, it pauses when you go into edit mode. Totally fine. Anyway, uh, keep going, keep going. So get link. Um, get link, basically, when you link a uh, logic to a block like this, um, the first one that you link it to is going to be link zero. So wherever we see the word where, it's going to refer to whatever block um, has been first linked to that processor. Super awesome. And then this one, um, I don't like wasting silicone or material or time on building switches. Switches are awesome for certain things, but for this we don't need them. So the switch is power basically. Where are we now? Yep, we're right here. So the switch is basically power. Once the block is powered on, it's going to sense that and then it's going to start doing the code. Until it gets power, it's not going to do anything. It's going to sit there. Um, and that's what all this code is about. But the cool thing is, let's say that you're trying to fill up a container, something that doesn't need or can take power, you just switch this little power thing from greater than to always. So, not a big deal. Um, Alright, so we got the power and now we're on the initialization. So this is something that only happens once. So it checks to see um, if it has been, if this uh, variable on has been changed. Uh, right now we didn't do anything, so it's going to be set at zero. Um, so if we go down, if we look, it is going to first create a random number uh, from zero to a hundred thousand, and we're going to call that variable random. Then we're going to take that variable random and we're going to get rid of its decimal places. It has a bunch of decimal places, it doesn't work, so we're going to create a new value called random one that is just that random number that we created, no decimal places. Um, we're also going to reset some values that we need to use later in the code. Um, so the U count, the number of units we found, is going to get set to zero. And then this thing called starting is going to get set to zero. 
and then we're going to set a value called on to one. So now that we're at the end, we're going to all the way back to the beginning of the code. So we refresh, make sure we have all the same stuff. Um, is the power, it's going to check the power, is the power on, we can go to the next one. And then initialization. So remember at the very bottom of this string, which is the initialization step, uh, we set the value of on to one. So now it skips this whole thing and it skips that little end block that we had just at the end. Um, that's how a lot of this code goes. That's usually how I write code. Um, I don't like having jumps that go back into the code itself. Um, you get problems where it errors out, where it keeps looping in itself if you didn't write it correctly. Um, when you jump over an end block, it everything just works better uh, in my opinion. All right, so now we're on the important stuff. This is the flag unit process. Um, my flag process, a little more complicated, but it works better for me. All right, so we're gonna check a value called u count. Um, is it greater than zero? No, we've never done this before. We never set that value. Uh, we're gonna bind a unit. Who we're gonna bind? We're gonna bind um, that uh, thing at the beginning, the set. And because it's being set to poly, this is going to bind a poly. Beautiful. And let's see. Uh, bind it. All right. So when it binds a unit, let's say that you started the game and that you don't have polys out yet. Um, if there's no polys available on the map that is your own, it's going to return a value of null. And if it's null, it's going to go end. It's going to start the code all over again from the beginning which is useful because you don't want it to be bound to nothing and then continue the code. It doesn't work. So if the unit exists on the board, it's going to go to the next part, which is check to see if it's controlled. Um, controlled, I'm pretty sure, is for if it's in formation and if another logic uh, block is controlling it. We don't want to take um, units from other people, from other um, logic processor, whatever's. So it checks to see if that's there. So if it's not being controlled, then we can jump to the next check. So the next check is holding. Um, if I want this unit to be doing something, if I want it to be filling my projector with phase fabric, it can't already be holding something else. Uh, in this case, we don't want the, oh, I changed it already. We wouldn't want these little monos to be holding lead or something while it's trying to grab uh, titanium to fill the plasmidium compressors. So it checks. So if it's not holding anything, if holding is less than or equal to zero, it'll go to the next step. And this is where we flag. Um, this, it just says flag that unit that you've taken uh, with the value random one. So remember, random one was when we took a random number and we got rid of the decimal places using four and that's why we call it random one and not random. And then we're gonna set the u count to one and then it's just going to end. So the logic would go all the way from the beginning, it would roll down, we would get to the beginning of the flag process. Is u count greater than one? Yes, we just did this whole mess of stuff all in here. So now we can jump down to starting location. Um, so I love this starting location bit of code. Um, if I wanna check to make sure that my uh, processor is working, if it flagged and is controlling the unit correctly. Um, I don't want it to go from wherever it is on the map into the core and like let's say it doesn't have the thing it's trying to pull out. I don't want it to do that. I want it to go right to my processor right away to know that it worked. Um, and then it can start doing its job. So this only happens once. So starting, um, is this variable that I set greater than equal to one? No, it doesn't exist yet. So then unit control. So that unit is going to move to at this x, at this y. So this is awesome bit of code. It's like in the Beyond Logic's cheat cheat manual. I'll tell you about it at the end. It's amazing. Um, but basically, um, at this is the location of x of the processor itself. At this y, location of y of the processor itself. So we're going to move it to the processor, and then we're going to use this within unit control block, which says, um, is the unit within a unit of five uh, radius uh, from this x and y value. And we're going to call that variable within. So if it is within that location, five units, it's going to give us a value of one. If it's not, 
it's going to keep going through the code back to the beginning until it gets within that area. Super helpful for me, but awesome. It only does this once. Once it is within five units, it will set that variable to that variable to one, and then starting will jump right over all this stuff, and it'll jump to withdraw process. Okay, let's go. Withdraw process. Scroll down. So that's this purple area. All right. So what is this? We create a variable called items. Um, it is going to, yeah, all right. So it's going to detect to see if the unit is holding any items. Um, if it is, where is it right now, jump? If it is holding items, it's gonna to jump to the deposit process, but if it's not holding items, then the unit is gonna locate the core, and the variable for the location of the core is out x, out y, and then it's gonna to move to that out x, out, out y location of the core. Then it's gonna take from the core. And then remember, we created a variable right in the very beginning again. This is like the quality of life stuff uh, called what? And whatever you have it set at the beginning of the code, that's what it's gonna withdraw from the core. And then how much? Same thing, uh, whatever, uh, whatever number we set for the maximum amount that unit can withdraw is how much it's gonna take. So that ends, it goes back to the beginning of code, goes all the way down, and then it'll stop right here at this jump. And then because it is holding one or more items, it's gonna to go to the deposit process. And that's actually pretty quick. So it's gonna find the location of X in where. So in the beginning of the code, we use that awesome little quick thing called get link. So it's gonna get the location of whatever you have first linked that processor to. And then it's going to get the Y location. Perfect. And then the unit is going to move to X and Y. Beautiful. And then it's going to drop to that uh, block infinity. Um, you can put as much as you want. I just put 999. You can drop more than it has. And then once it goes down to zero, it'll go back to the beginning of the uh, code. It'll see if it's holding anything. If it's not, it'll withdraw. Um, this is the coolest part. I love code that fixes itself. There's like no problems. It solves so many things, especially when people take units from me. <gasps> why do you take control of my babies? I don't know why. They do. They do. They always want to take my megas because, I don't know, they want to build stuff. But the megas are doing jobs. Anyway, uh, quality, quality control checks. Um, super beautiful. This is what I showed you guys in the beginning. So create a variable called alive. It's gonna check the health of that unit. If that unit's life is zero or less than zero, it can be less than zero. If it gets killed, the its health is actually gonna be like a negative number and it'll store that data. But anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, if it's dead, we look, see this jump? This jump is gonna go all the way down to the reinitialization process. And I'll tell you that in a second. I'm just gonna show you all the checks we do in the quality control. Um, flag check. It's going to check the flag of the unit that's currently being used. Um, I do this because a lot of people use this, like, I don't know what it is. Someone made this, like, code in the beginning where, like, it changes the flag every second. I don't know why. Um, I guess it's useful for some reason. Anyway, if someone takes control of my baby, uh, my code is going to recognize that. And it's going to say, whatever, take that baby. It's going to grab a new one. It's going to reinitialize the code. And then item check. Let's say for some reason that something happened, someone grabbed that unit, picked something up, who knows? Uh, let's say it was holding something by accident in the beginning, the timing didn't work out, it's going to recognize that. Um, and then, oh yeah, so if it's, if it's holding an item, it's gonna jump to this part of the code, which is saying, is that item what it's supposed to be holding? If not, it's gonna reinitialize. So how does the reinitialize work? Super easy. It's going to set that value on to zero. So if we look in the beginning of the code. Remember, the way I write code, it goes from top all the way to the bottom every single time. Top to an end, top to an end. So if we go up, um, where is that on? So it's going to do this initialization process. So on will now equal zero. If one of the quality control checks fails, it's going to generate a new flag. It's going to reset the unit so it's no longer, um, it'll re-flag, it'll, re, it'll redo the flag process, 
and then it will reset the starting process, the part of the code where it asks it to go to the processor. Um, yeah, it fixes everything. It's kind of amazing. And very last thing, very last thing is the signature. Um, every time I update my code, I always change the, the version number. And then this little thing in the bottom, look, that's me. That's Bunny Builder. Find me on YouTube. Um, guys, I love you. I love the comments. If you use my code, you got to put a little signature at the end. You got to put something like, I love Bunny Builder. Something. I like Bunny Builder. You don't have to love me. You just like me. I don't care. Put something like at that at the end. It would make me so, so happy. Uh, especially if I see you on Atner. If I see I love Bunny Builder on someone's code in Atner, it just makes my day. Make my day, guys. Make my day. Um, that's it. Wow, 67 lines. I did that very, very quickly. Um, there's three other things I want to show you. It's the same things that I showed you in the other video. And that is the first one, all about units. So these are the different units that, there's more units that can hold items, but these are the main ones. If you take a look, a unit has a speed and it has an item capacity. So I use these two numbers, I combine them with math to create a factor, and it's basically how fast that unit can fill um, a block. So yeah, um, monos are 60, flares are double that. Um, I used to say flares were the best because they fill things faster. I don't agree with that anymore. People always use flares, they always mess the code up. There's always like, they try to take them and then do like a pirate, uh, pirate type bomb. I used to really love flares, I'm not into it. I always use monos because no one uses monos. So it just makes it so I don't have to worry about anything. Um, the next one up would probably be polys. Polys are definitely better than horizons, fill factor 75. And then the one that I use to fill, I'll show you really quick, ah, undo, undo. How do I undo? There you go. All right. Uh, the code. Uh, when I create something like I want to create a quad, and like this thing needs like a thousand uh, silicone between all the different uh, con reconstructors, I always use megas. Megas are the best bang for your buck. Um, but they cost more. They cost more. There's also like, what do I have? Maths. We have a, what is it? Cost and fill factor. I don't know. It, it yeah. It depends on how many processes you want to make, or you get really crazy with the code and tell it to check for different things. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was something, something. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna link to this in the video again. Um, this thing is amazing. I don't know who Beyond is. I don't know how he wrote this, but it is amazing. It goes through every single bit and type of code for Mindustry. So anything in there you want to know how to do, it's all in here. It's amazing. Um, there's nothing else like this on the internet that I can find. And the other thing is this crazy guy. Um, he goes through basically every command. Um, so like all the math commands, he goes through every one and he like shows you how it works. Uh, pretty crazy he's recording like a very old screen but it works I watched this video to learn how to do a bunch of stuff um, that is basically it um, if you're using this code super 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 easy to change things around in game um, if you like this let me know if you have questions let me know I hope you like this revision video um, yeah that's it Listen.